a little bit of um, tech difficulty, which is why the angle is so weird and took us so long to get started. Um, here we go. Let's begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Your spirit. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You are sick to heal the contrary of the heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated right here with the Father to see for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to an everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Lord our God, help us to love you with all our hearts and to love all men and women as you know them. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives in with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, we have not approached that which could be touched, and a blazing fire and a gloomy darkness, and storm, and trumpet blast, and a voice speaking words such as those who heard it begged that no message be further addressed to them. Indeed, so fearful was the spectacle that Moses said, I'm terrified and trembling. No, you have approached Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and the countless angels and the festal gathering and the assembly of the first one in the world heaven, and God, the judge of all, and the spirits that just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. Great is the Lord and holy to be praised in the city of our God. The holy mountain, the fairest of heights, is the joy of all the earth. God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. Mount Zion, the recesses of the north, with the city of the great king. God is with the castles of renown, and he is a strong God. God, we honor your mercy within your temple. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God makes it firm. God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. As your name, O oh God, so also your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Justice, your right hand is full. God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. Jesus is summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave from there. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. Twelve drove out many demons and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In 
when we think that this gospel message is to priests and ministers and others directly in the Bible and the work of the church, then we really need to think again. This call to go out two by two, to be careful what we choose, to take along the way what's important to us, to go from house to house, to not get discouraged. That's directed to all of us. Up to this point in the Gospels, Jesus has predicted word was come, come and see, come and follow me. Now he's And our lives will never be fulfilled until we hear and respond to the second word. Our lives are to be commissioned with lives which Jesus' word go has put in. So we have to decide if we are going to be in the grave or if we're going to be standing on the side of the road. That is why the Pope's words in Caritas and Veritas. So it's just a little opportunity. The more we strive to secure a common good corresponding to the real needs of our neighbors, the more effectively we love them. Every Christian is called to practice this charity that corresponds to the new vocation. So Jesus was saying, Benedict was saying, saying this, this is a vocation that we all share. It's not just for the ministries of the church. When we hear this gospel, we need to ask what's most important, what matters most, what is more important than parents and sex. We are not responsible for the results. We have to worry about that. But we are responsible for going. We are responsible for our own efforts to make it that way. The apostles were warning the people who had refused to, to come up and hear that. And they went anyway. The word of God must be delivered even when we face this opposition. We are a Christian when we come to culture. And there is an urgency about this message. You know the old <laughs> Jesus Christ is coming. There's something about that. There's something about the need that we have to be busy about the gospel message. The directives that we hear in Mark's gospel were urgent for the early church to go quickly and to be dependent on God's care. One thing seems to be clear. Mark is asking all of his readers to consider how to balance their action in building up God's kingdom with their trust in God's own loving and loving people. We have good news to share. News that God is straightening out the mess that we humans have made and that He wants us to be His instruments of change. And because few people are changed just by words. Also, show our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, and our co workers what God has in mind for His creation, precisely by how we live our lives in this world. The most famous series that college students are here to talk all of our lives, it has to put in all those boxes. We 
we have to become whole, consumed in everything we do with doing the work of Jesus Christ. Each one of us to go. Cures the disease in our ears. As Catholic Christians, we know and have experienced a life saving cure, yet we are often guilty by our silence of withholding that life giving, life saving power. Rather than keep silent, we need to be joyfully contagious messengers of God's grace to those around us. Joyfully. <laughs> Not beating people over the head, joyfully mess, bringing the message of God's grace to those around us. And sometimes, this can simply be the words of a friend, like the gift of people who are showing interest, or showing concern, or showing care about others. We must be alert to the gift in each of us. So we have opportunities to share. We trust that God is with us. And we pray for the sake of life. Thank 
Blessing our new Lord God of creation, for through your wisdom this bread we offer you for the effort of the human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you through the vine of the human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, be pleased to bring the gifts we bring to your altar and make them the sacrament of our salvation. We have to be to Christ. Father, it is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. He is the Word who made the universe, the Savior that you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, who took us and was born of the Virgin Mary, for our sake, he will be brought to the cross, put it in the and reveal the resurrection. This he fulfilled your will and left the broken people. And so we join the angels and saints in proclaiming your glory as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, have the honor of our soul of your glory, of the honor of your eyes. Blessed is you, of the name of the Lord, of the honor of your eyes. Truly, God and just are doing our salvation always and ever and giving you thanks, Father, most holy. You are the King of holy and the Son of holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending God our spirit upon them like we do fall. Today we become for us the body and love of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time we betrayed him, we put him into his passion, took him with him, giving thanks, he broke him, and gave him to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, and we truly give it up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he turned the child and once more gave him thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, drink from it. For this is the child's and my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for the good of many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in your name. Lord, we proclaim the name of the Lord and the first of the church. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection, we offer you the one of the Lord and the of salvation. Give me thanks and your acknowledgement and for being the bread that's administered to you. Help me be great that partaking in the body of our Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our bishop, I'm sorry, Mitchell, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, our brothers and sisters, from the fall and seek the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in their mercy. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, your spouse, with the blessed of the apostles, with Catherine de Vici, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, and to eternal life, and we pray that they will love you with your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with the men in the name of God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Um, at the Savior's command, informed by the man teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth and in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and be us now in future temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for every people. Grace us to grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the world is now. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Without our sins, for the faith of your church, and grace us to grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. The peace of the Lord be with you Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called in the suffering of God. My Jesus, I believe that you have presence in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in the Since I cannot at this moment receive you as a loving, come at least spiritually as a child. I can pray to you as if you were already there, and you find myself holy to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you invigorate us with this help to our salvation. By this Eucharist, give the true faith and continue to grow throughout the world. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Um, thank you so much for being with us and anyone else who's joining us or who will join us a little later. Um, we will absolutely remember your Aunt Isabel and your friends.